saying this as openly and clearly as you are is really interesting and refreshing to see. I want to draw your attention to the new American ambassador who's been announced and confirmed, Eric Garcetti, and I want to quote to you what he said about the Citizenship Amendment Act. He was asked during the Senate Foreign Affairs Relations Committee meeting about the CA. Now, he's someone who's spoken up multiple times on human rights and discrimination. He thinks the Citizenship Amendment Act is a core piece of his engagement rather than an obligation. He also says he will work because he thinks that this is discriminatory towards Muslims. Now, you will have soon in New Delhi from arguably our most important strategic partner, a new ambassador who thinks a key legislation, which is core of your ideological agenda, is discriminatory towards Muslims. You know, um, first of all, uh, when, when CA was passed, there was a debate. People in this country tried to make it an international debate. And it was, in, you know, it was interesting when I went around the world and I explained to different countries that please look at your citizenship criteria and tell me, are you less specific in terms of how you have defined the criteria than we have? Take the United States. There are two very well-known amendments there, something called the Lautenberg Amendment and the Spectre Amendment, which actually single out specific communities and specific faiths and give them a faster pathway into citizenship, not just those. I can cite to you in US, there's a jackson Vanick Amendment. You know, uh, there, was a, there was one, uh, if my memory serves me right, for the Hmong people. So, uh, and this is not just the US. I mean, if you look at Europe, you know, the Germans have a faster citizenship pathway for people of uh, German descent in other countries. There, there are other European countries who say, you speak my language, you have my faith, uh, you have cultural characteristics. But India doesn't have one uh, faith. No, sorry? India doesn't have one faith. Sure, sure. But and therefore the question is about no, no, no. I, him thinking look, of this being discriminatory towards Muslims. No, the, the point is that in many cases, the people who are persecuted have nowhere else to go except to India. I mean, if you are a Hindu in Pakistan, Who's, who's being oppressed. Where, where else will you go other than India? Okay. So, I mean, look, somewhere, I mean, you should not subject common sense to political correctness. I mean, there is a certain, uh, there's a certain reality here which all of us know. I mean, stares you in the face. But your question, what happens when he comes here? Let him come here. Pyar se samjha denge. Pyar se samjha denge. Nay American ambassador. Of course, we're out of time. Ordinarily, a few years ago, if I was doing this uh, session at the conclave, we would have spent a lot of time talking about Pakistan. We've come to the end of the session, we've not even mentioned the P word. Given what's happening in Pakistan at this moment, Foreign Minister, what's your reading of our relationship with our neighbor on the West? Uh, well, I think our relationship uh, has not fundamentally changed. Uh, today, our relationship is at a low ebb because uh, they, ha they have not yet demonstrated a willingness uh, to give up on uh, cross-border terrorism as a primary uh, way of uh, dealing with India. So I think as they move away from that, one has to look at the possibilities. You know, it's been very refreshing to have Foreign Minister Jay Shankar explain his point of view and India's point of view or the India way, uh, going back to Indian scriptures and Indian uh, streams of thought as opposed to referring just very casually and easily to Western thought or even Chinese thought. And this, I think, is something which really needs to be worked on. Can we have a very warm round of applause as we thank the Foreign Minister for joining us.